So, um, Lavinia, uh, it is nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Rocky. Um, and so essentially in this discussion here, I kind of just wanted to talk to you about how you entered into the sex work business on the side of like OnlyFans and things like that, as well as kind of, um, you have a, a TikTok, is that correct? Okay, and so I think that one of the most interesting things I found is talking to OnlyFans creators that um, advertise on TikTok because TikTok seems to have a real uh, hard on for slapping down creators that have any type of sex work related to them whatsoever, which is just horrible. So uh, we'll get into a little bit of that um, and then just generally about you and kind of anywhere else that this discussion takes us. So does that sound all good? All right. So um, how did you get into OnlyFans and creating OnlyFans or, or what actually was your initial foray into content in general? So I actually started working as a dancer at like a local club in my area. And um, I mean, I mainly did that because I was fresh. Um, I was planning on moving out into the big city and i was working 40 plus hours a week at subway oh. and i was also planning to go to school full time <laughs> and i think i just like had this realization that i'm like i can't do this like <laughs> i can't work 40 plus hours a week in a shitty job and still expect to like pay for everything um, absolutely yeah so i i it was always something i wanted to do i always wanted to be a dancer i always wanted to be a stripper um so i kind of just did it and it took like a couple months to actually like work up the courage to go because i live like an hour from the city like small town mm -hmm. girl i didn't know anybody in the industry Ooh, i didn't okay. know anything i was hiding it from my parents from my friends <laughs> um but i did it mm -hmm. and uh it was great for a couple months and then covid happened ah uh, yeah it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I um, imagine. And then, so actually, let me go ahead and, and get a couple questions in there. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have that moment when they're, especially when you're younger and, and you are, you know, told that what you're supposed to do is work that 40 hour work week and do these things, that you have that moment where either you're like, oh, this is something that I can manage. Like, hey, this is something I'm living a simple life. I like this. I can do this job. It's cool. Or you have that moment where you're like, oh no, I absolutely cannot do this. This is not for me. And especially, you know, that can be depending on if you, especially if you have like mental health issues or if you have physical health issues, like I personally have uh, Crohn's disease, which is just something that like, basically uh, my body attacks itself in the form of like my stomach hurts a lot. Um, but so essentially for me, I worked at like a 40 hour work week and I was like, I have no idea how people do this. There is absolutely no way. Um, and so, you know, I think that that's extremely relatable and something that I don't necessarily hear a lot of people talk about. So w was there like a specific thing that caused you to feel that way? Was it just the stress of everything weighing down on you? Are you not the type of person who can stick to that 40 hour week? So what, what was it that had that epiphany? So um, I'm actually diagnosed with anxiety and depression and chronic stress. Okay. So I've had chronic stress since I was 15. Mm -hmm. I think um, just mm -hmm. from being involved so much in high school and it was fine in high school, but it got like once I graduated, it got to the point to where it was just weighing on me so much to where I'd be overwhelmed and I would kind of like explode in a sense where I wouldn't be able to get out of bed for like mm -hmm. a couple weeks in mm -hmm. a sense. And um, yeah, I just I couldn't work and kind of like live a normal life because of that and i've had to do a lot of things to manage my stress mm -hmm. and one of my number one stressors were money like i mean it was money sure. and also like that not having enough time to mm -hmm. work to live to also like get A's, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, and working a 40 hour work week in of itself makes it hard to do school part time, let alone get through school in a way that makes it satisfactory to you. Because I've noticed that I have friends that have kind of taken a year off or gone through school a little bit slower. And a lot of the times they get into this rut where they're like, hey, I don't feel like I'm progressing or moving forward anymore. And then it gets into their head to a certain degree. So that I totally can understand and relate with there. And then in regards to um, like your diagnosis and whatnot, that absolutely makes complete sense like i too have suffered from a lot of anxiety and there's especially one thing that i found and i i haven't necessarily talked about this with a lot of people so i don't know if you're late or not but one of the things that i felt when i went into that 40-hour work week was 
I was trapped in this like box. Like I have to be at this building for eight hours and I can't leave because if I do, I'm not gonna have the money. And it's interesting how like in society, money is so much of a, a stressor that doing something such as like stripping, which can be very anxiety inducing, you have to go up in front of people and take your clothes off and be comfortable with yourself, etc. Like, uh, like, but that is far less stressful in a lot of ways because of the money and the money is the main stressor, right? So um, I think that's a, a really interesting aspect. Um, and I only ask because like I said, I didn't talk about people. Is that... Um, thing where you feel I like I said I felt kind of trapped in a box with that whole 40 hour is that something that you can kind of relate to yeah um I've honestly felt like that my entire life um for me it's more like I feel like trapped in a schedule Got um it. Mm-hmm. and like the box that you're like the box you're referring to yeah. is for me kind of like a time frame of like mm-hmm. okay here's my entire day and I have to be here from here to this time and then I have to go to this from this time and it's like it's very like trapping you're right <laughs> absolutely yeah no i i totally feel that and especially because um you know and i'm sure that anxiety plays into this in a specific way but for me with like with my with my crohn's disease for example i have to kind of like base my schedule around like hey i can't eat if i'm gonna be going here at this time because i know either my stomach's gonna hurt or i'm gonna have to go to the bathroom or things like that with anxiety just knowing right that you have to go to this place in of itself is anxiety inducing so i think that that is like a a thing that people really don't talk about that much and and it is it is kind of like it put it puts you in a metaphorical box as well in the sense that like you then don't feel like you can do other things you don't like you don't feel like you can go try out new things because you have to adhere to such a strict schedule because otherwise you're not going to have the money you're not going to have these other things that you need so no i i think that that is really intriguing and and uh, to back it up a, a little bit here so you said that you had already been uh, interested in, in stripping what was the thing that got you interested in stripping to begin with I've always been a very out of the box person um, I've always liked pushing the boundaries with things I've been very very like sexual my whole life but not in, not in like a bad way like I've always been you know wear whatever I want to school and um, kind of kind of like that and I don't know. It was just a very interesting lifestyle. Um, or, I mean, not lifestyle, but more just like the idea of like dancing and yeah. wearing nice clothes and being on a stage and having people throw money at you. Um, it was very glamorized in my head. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah cause I, I get you. Yeah. Cause like that is in of itself, like you have several layers of admiration when you're a stripper, right? Like you have the people that are just watching in admiration and then you have the people that are throwing the money in admiration. And then you have the people that want to take you to the back room. And there's nothing, there's this weird idea, especially on TikTok for whatever reason that like, there's something negative about liking attention. It's like, no, everybody we're social beings enjoy attention people like being noticed and feeling good about themselves etc so and and so basically would you say that like um you were more maybe set you said not in a bad way which i'm curious what actually i'm curious what you mean what do you mean by like not in a bad way sexually is there like a is there something behind that that you meant or what do you mean well i come from like a very like small town where just everything like not like out of the norm is like Mm -hmm. frowned upon like being a sexual person or like being comfortable in your body or god forbid do what i do um (laughs) So I guess that's just kind of like the way I talk. <laughs> no, I, I totally <laughs> like understand. Like a warning on everything I say. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally understand because I myself grew up in a very religious household. And like um, I grew up in a somewhat small town. It's getting bigger now. But I'm uh, uh, about an hour outside of uh, like uh, an hour and a half outside of Oakland in California. And like the area that I'm in, much more Republican, much more religious. And so I myself have moved away from that. And then I found that when I did become sexual, for whatever reason, there was this almost thing in the back of my head where I acknowledged the Christian ethic or the thing behind that, even though I might not necessarily agree with it anymore. And then also every now and again, it doesn't happen anymore, but I'd always have, um, not always, but I'd every here and there have these thoughts of like, oh, hey, and what I, is what I'm doing bad or am I going to go to hell for this or things like that? And overall 
I just kind of had to ration myself out of that. But that is definitely one of the negative effects that growing up in, you know, a really religious household, not that there's something inherently wrong with religion, but if you do take it in a way to push down people or make people feel, uh, you know, other than or bad about themselves because they do a thing that's totally normal and natural and that most people want to do, um, it, it pushes them in that direction as well. Um, I mean, d we can move uh, past this shortly, but did you have, do you have any of that that's kind of left? Did you have a religious upbringing and, and, and whatnot, or did you have to work past that at any point? I did, um, and I think I'm way past that point now. I mean, it was really hard in high school because I was like when I was starting to like question my religion in mm -hmm. a sense, and like right sure. now I don't have a religion. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't have time for it. I probably <laughs> will when I'm older, when I have the time to actually practice religion. I think it could be very yeah. beneficial. For sure. Um, but I did have that where I just had to like work past like these beliefs that were like ingrained in my head. And especially when I started doing like sex work, specifically OnlyFans in a sense where all my stuff was online and I was having people from like my hometown subscribe to me and I was like pillow talk for people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was hard. It was hard mentally because, you know, like it's it's easy to be like, oh, I don't care about what people think, which is true. But these are like my hometown people. Like these are the, aren't just people that have this like vision of me online. Like these are people that have like, I've grown up with people that have seen me since I was a child. So it was kind of hard to like move past that. And, yeah. um, but I think I, I'm good now. It was, it was, it was like a year ago or so, but it was, it was a challenge. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And that's, uh, that's great that you're past that at this point. And actually, I think you make a really interesting point there that when you do have people that are just totally not related to you in any way and, and, and in the sense that you've never met them before, you're not friends with them, it's almost like there's this persona that you take on through whatever third party like content whatever you're doing at that time but then when somebody that you know comes into that whole pot it kind of breaks away that barrier between that the persona and who you are as a person and so that is that is an interesting thing to have to work through and I, I had to work through a little bit of that in the past like I I used to have to hide my content from like all sorts of people that I didn't want to share with etc so that yeah no you bring up a really interesting point there so um, I think that uh, let's go ahead and back it up once again a little more so um overall we got that stripping etc started there um what then uh content wise i, I think you said from there it kind of just felt natural to move into content did you go straight over to only fans and porn type content or did we move into like a tiktok thing and then over what did we do so i actually did go straight to only fans um there was a girl i was working with at the club and mm -hmm. she did it while she was dancing and she always talked about it but i was like i can't you know like i'm 18 like i can't have that on the internet internet blah 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 mm -hmm. um and then like yeah COVID happened and i was just kind of like through it like <laughs> i don't have any shame about it um but i did go straight to only fans and it was so funny because the content i was posting was so like pg compared <laughs> to like what i do now um like <laughs> I'd only show my nipples and that okay. was just because uh, we do like top or we did at the club I worked at it was topless so I was okay. like you can see it in person anyways it won't hurt seeing it online and <laughs> um, it's been what like a little over two years and I just like slowly started doing more and more and more and I didn't start doing TikTok until I want to say six months after I started in OnlyFans and okay. it just like blew up. Um, okay. I started making significantly more money and developing more of a name for myself. And mm. at that point where it kind of like skyrocketed, I was just like, I'm making enough money to where if I do porn, who cares? So <laughs> I did yeah. it and I yeah. released my first sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense. I've always thought about that. It's like most people, especially if you're already in the business doing lewds, but most people have some number that's like life, almost life changing to an extent. So it's like at a certain point, I can understand how you could become more and more comfortable because then it's like, hey, even if even if all this falls out from under me, I have enough money that I can go buy a piece of property maybe at some point and then invest it in something and, you know, go find something that I enjoy to do. So that or make your own business, et cetera. So, no, that's that is um, definitely uh, interesting. So let's go ahead and start at the beginning of 
the OnlyFans, right? When you started your OnlyFans, you made that that note there that like uh, you know you posted a little more just like lewd content with say just your nipples showing, and then got more comfortable as you went. What was the reception when you first started OnlyFans? I know you said TikTok's what blew it up, but um, you know. Were you growing pretty decently off of it? And for the first six months, was there any advertising that you did? Did you just do like Twitter? What was that business practice there? So my advertising when I first started, a lot of the subs that I got were people that I actually met at the club I was working at. Okay. Um, and, you know, I would just be like, hey, like you can't see me naked at this establishment, but you can <laughs> see me naked online. And I would just give them the link. But I also made an Instagram. Um, I made an Instagram and that's like where I would like kind of just use, like I'd promote myself with it in a sense yeah. where if I was talking to someone, even if they didn't get a lap dance, I'd be like, hey, you should follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did. Um, so I'd also post about my OnlyFans on there and that's kind of where it started. Um, I think my first couple months, I was making around like 500 bucks a month, and I okay. thought that was awesome. I was like, this yeah. is great. I was like, hey. this is basically free money. Like, this is awesome. 500 extra bucks in my pocket. I'm, I'm here for it. Absolutely. No, I mean, yeah, I I did, uh, me and uh, a friend of mine, we do um, reviews uh, online of, of OnlyFans and we do uh, these types of interviews and all sorts of other content. And I remember even just starting, we made like, I think one of the first paychecks we made was like 250 bucks. And I was like, we just posted content and we made that like that's it's a crazy feeling to be able to put out something about yourself in any way that then can just bring you back money it's it's a very good feeling so i totally feel you there and that actually is very very smart to be like hey like what do most people want on instagram for the most part both guys and girls want to see attractive women on instagram that's for the most part now you got some you want to see some attractive guys but yeah attractive women. so that's pretty that's pretty smart um and uh uh, yeah, that just seems like it would be a natural evolution there. So it sounds like it kind of just all added up together. And then we started TikTok. What was it that blew you up on TikTok? Was there a specific thing or was it a slow burn? What was it? So I had an account, and this was like back when it was like super easy to get followers on TikToks because they were all bots. Um, <laughs> and I just had like an account and I didn't even think I'd make money off of it I was literally just doing it because it was fun like mm -hmm. and I would post like kind of thirst traps like transition videos mm -hmm. and um then I met this girl who messaged me through DM she saw one of my TikToks and then we collabed and she was just like you need to do TikTok more and I was like okay I don't really understand but sure and we made this TikTok together of us doing, you know, the sound where it's like, open up the safe, bitches got oh, yeah, yeah. safe. Or, yeah. Um, we did a video to that and it blew up overnight. And I had like 12 million views. Dang. I just remember like, I was getting my toes done with my mom. <laughs> and I was like, just my phone was blowing up with notifications. And I'm like, every time I refreshed my page, it was another million that had Jeez. seen the video. It was, it was completely like, I like remember it like it was yesterday. It was so memorable and such a crazy experience. Um, and yeah, that's actually when I told my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that would be absolutely insane just to have that blow up like that. And it is crazy that TikTok has, you know, for for all of the terrible things about TikTok, it does have an algorithm that, you know, if they were to be a little more lax in places that they should be, it brings uh, people content that they would otherwise never see. And because it's short form, people are way more willing to follow and watch a much, much wider array of creators. And then each of those creators gets, you know, maybe not uh, a large portion of their audience, but even 5%, 1% of their audience to be real hardcore fans, buy merch, go to subscribe on YouTube, etc. That business model is just crazy and works so well for so many people. And so um, I, I can't imagine the excitement as well when like, as a TikTok hits like that. That would be crazy. So what did mom say when you said to her that what was going on? What did she say? So she already knew I was stripping, mm -hmm. which is a whole other story, which is actually <laughs> really funny. Oh, we can um, go into that next then. I'm curious. <laughs> do you want me to say that first? Actually, so go for it. Like yeah, that. yeah. Let's go ahead and flow. Yeah, go ahead. 
So I told my best friend that I was like working at this club, and like I said, I was from a really religious town, and she was not having it. Um, mm. She was very scared for my well-being, et cetera, et cetera. And she was justified, of course. Um, but she told her mom, Ooh. and then her mom told my mom. Ah. So it's maybe like a Sunday morning, and it's not the Lord's Day. <laughs> it was the Lord's Day, <laughs> eight o'clock, and I didn't get home till four o'clock every night, you know, like uh -huh. drive an hour at clubs. It gets, ends at two, drive an hour home. And then I'd like count my money, shower, all the gross sweat <laughs> off of me and then go to sleep. So I'm like in the middle of like my REM cycle, right? Like it's okay. eight o'clock. Yep. My mom bursts in my room and she was like, Libby, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm trying to sleep, mom. Like, what do you, what do you want? And she goes, yeah. I know where you've been going at night. Oh, no. Which, I know. I'm surprised it took them this long to figure this out because, <laughs> like, I was an 18-year-old girl, and I would just uh -huh. leave. Like, they had a ring doorbell camera. Like, I would yeah. just leave from, like, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. And they 10 never questioned it? Yeah. Like, your 18-year-old daughter is, like, <laughs> mysteriously gone from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., like, every yeah. night, and you're not going to question it. Yeah, that's a little suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, she was just, like, hounding me. She was, like... I know what you've been doing. It's not safe. And she's just like, she starts like rattling on and I'm like, turn around. So I make her turn around and it was mainly because I was naked and I didn't want her to see me naked. So I throw a shirt on, right? Mm -hmm. And I reach underneath my bed and I have my shoe box, my <laughs> freezer shoe box filled with cash from the night before. Yeah. And I dump it on the bed and I'm like, turn back around. And she goes, oh. Yeah. <laughs> was that from last week? And I'm like, Mom, this was from last night. And she goes, oh. <laughs> okay. And then yep. she turns around, and she never said anything else about it. Yeah. <laughs> Real quickly before you go into the next part, uh, me and my friend were literally just talking about this, like, two days ago. Um, I was uh, – I used to stream when I was, like, 13 or 14, and when, like, way back in the day with Twitch. And I um, I got, like – I got banned off of it for uh, the stupidest reason possible. Uh, totally another story. But essentially, I was making good I, – I was making money because I got subscribers, and then I would, like, do this thing. I, I play on Minecraft servers, and I would go and I'd advertise on those servers. People would come join. And what I'd do is, hey, if somebody donates this amount of money, I will raffle off, like, the lowest tier, uh, like uh, – rank on the minecraft server and so people come in and i'd get donations for that and it was kind of just like this really like self-churning kind of business model my mother and father had no idea i made content the only thing that they knew is that i loved youtube and i tried to like make youtube videos from like when i was 10 and like all the way up and um my parents disagreed they found out when i was 12 they're like no you can't do this so then when i was 14 streaming my mom comes down she says something about it and i was like and i was like i was like mom just look at my bank account and i just showed it to her and i had a little over like probably a little over eight hundred dollars or something like that but first you know for a 14 year old like that's pretty crazy so she was like what and i was like i was like yeah and she's like people pay you to what what are you doing and she thought there was like something way more deeper than that i was like no i just play video games i talk to people that's all i do and so like it seems that once the parents see the money is flowing, she never said a word to me about it again, and all the content I make never said anything since. So, for whatever reason, parents, the second they see the money is flowing, their mouths just zip up and the key gets thrown away. Um, but anyway, so I just want to mention that that is a hilarious story. So, um, what about the uh, when you told her about the TikTok blowing up in the whole OnlyFans situation? What about that? So, um,. She started, like, asking questions, I remember, because our the clubs that I was working at, they, like, completely closed down because of COVID, and she's like, asked me, she's like, why don't you work anymore? Like, how are you going to pay for school, blah, 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 and I kind of was just like, oh, yeah, like, I started doing this online thing, um, but she really found out about the whole, like, OnlyFans thing, because she thought I was just dancing at the club, mm -hmm. um, because, um, <laughs> this is so long, <laughs> someone, a random number, sent my dad pictures oh me. oh that's so, so yeah. fucked up bro yeah 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, my, my sister, real quick, my sister, she had an ex who she sent nudes to, and, like, she, my parents did not know that she was sexual at this time, and he found her on, uh, found my mother on Facebook and sent the nudes, like, to my mother, and I was like, and my, my sister was underage, by the way, I was like, you are a psychopath? I reported him, obviously, I was like, you are a psycho, so, but, but no, that is fucked up. And it is a form of revenge porn, and that person absolutely should have been prosecuted, even though I don't think you can right now under the current revenge porn, but it's they should be. Anyway, go ahead. It was terrible. It caused this whole rift between my family, and um, mm. I've always had uh, problems with my dad. We've always butt heads, but this yeah. was just, like, the cherry on top. Like, yeah. I actually, like, started living at a friend's house. It was mm. just so bad, and it was just... I understand. Like, I understand. Um, he found out his little girl was making porn. Um, mm. So it's, it was hard. It was hard for him. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of when they found out. I remember they asked me to stop and I said no. Yeah. I, I mean, at like, that point, it's your business model and whatnot. It's like, I can't just stop, you know? And, this and, was and, before mm-hmm. I was making money, though, I think. Oh, okay, okay. But, I'm but, sorry, this was like two years ago. I'm just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 totally okay but like that just goes to show though as well how fucked up that like weird trend is where people will go and screenshot shit and send it to people's parents on face it's really weird and on top of that like you're trying to impose some weird psychological damage on the on the parent as well like why do they need to know that especially they don't need to know that from some random stranger of all people that makes it 10 times worse so it's um, terrible yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember I actually had a TikTok go viral because um, me and my friend Lexi, we captioned it. We were like, oh, no, please don't tell our dads because her dad's <laughs> dead and oh. my dad doesn't have social media. <laughs> okay, so gotcha. it was just kind of like a joke. Like, yeah. what are people going to do? Like, yeah. what, what will they do, right? Yeah. Um, so I actually had multiple people respond, like, stitch my video, like, finding my father. Like, they did, like this like detective work um and they like looked on my instagram they found a woman with the last name roberts and they found a man through her following and they just sent some like random dude with the same last name like my content and it was like is this your daughter and i'm like so we're out just out here traumatizing like random men now like (laughs) i know it's 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 straight up they have like taken the 4chan model and just kind of ran with it like this is like so there's this set set, not a lot there's so many people on tiktok that are great especially like the lgbt side of tiktok fucking awesome but there's this weird little subsection of tiktok that is just the worst people that you don't want to deal with and those are those i didn't want to say it but yes exactly (laughs) the cells i didn't know what to say but yeah no for real and and the fact that they do that type of thing it's like yeah you're trying to traumatize that person that you don't know and whoever the fuck you're sending it to it's just the weirdest way to pass time it's always grown adults too Mm -hmm. like if you're gonna do it at least get like children that are like being way too inappropriate i mean i don't still don't think that's any of anyone's business besides the parents but like I'm a grown woman. Like, Absolutely, my father yeah. can't do anything. Yeah, what's he going to um, do, ground you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's very weird, and it's, like, almost an invasion of privacy. Um, it's, I just, at least on my For You page, I haven't seen that in, like, a fat minute. So yeah, luckily. Luckily, yeah, it seems to have died down. Gone. <laughs> yeah hopefully it stays gone um so no that that is that is really interesting and it seems like it all it seems like for your mom it went down really easily um i'm sorry that there was issues obviously on the other end but um in general so you had that tiktok blow up and then was it like what was the idea then were you like okay i'm gonna try to use this as an advertising platform or, or how did that kind of, yes that was the immediate thought okay okay cool uh, and then did you put like, your all right hmm? It was like, all right, this is working. Um, Mm -hmm. Whatever I was doing, I was just making stupid videos. Still, (laughs) that's like like my job. I just make stupid videos, (laughs) so I continue to do it. And I didn't have as much knowledge as I do now about TikTok and um, as many accounts as I do now. It was just Mm -hmm. one main account, and I just continued to make content, and it did really well. I think it was January of twenty twenty one. It was like my first big month ever. I made five figures 
Ooh, okay, nice. Good job. Good job. That sounds yeah, really cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool to just like again, there it's so dope that there are these platforms that can provide life-changing amounts of money to people. And so, um and good on you. Like this is the one thing that I people for some reason too that that incel group, right? They they see pe women like yourself or a bunch of other people that I've spoken to or even like guys that are, are attractive even though they're a little less harsh on the guys, but even the guys they are harsh on. Um it's weird that they they go and they like attack people when overall for the most part most people would do what you're doing if they had the ability to do so if you had the ability to make like just basic con not basic content but just big videos and then have like that be your living like who wouldn't do that and every single loophole that you can kind of exploit that's what you should do like i I'm fully in belief of that because like, you know, every single person deserves to live the life that they should have or the, the best life that they possibly can. And I wish that everybody could live the best possible life. Right. So having people try to like knock off ways that you can like be successful just has always felt so weird to me. Um, have you gotten. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I don't even mind it now because it's like if people want to hate on my videos or if people want to like talk crap about me, it's like you're just doing more for me like every hate comment that someone leaves on my tiktok is just increasing my chances of someone who's going to subscribe to me seeing that tiktok and subscribing um so like if you really want to be mean to me just ignore my videos no like. absolutely <laughs> I, I, i've i've said this a million times too especially to like sports fans right it's like if you don't like what the nba is doing or the nfl or whatever it is stop watching and for some reason most people have such a hard time doing that and that's exactly the question that i was about to ask is like you know how much um how often but so beyond that right because that's the online aspect one thing that i usually like to ask about is have you had any like uh, like push back in your regular life like is there any time that you like are looked at differently in like you know wherever you're at because you're a sex worker a lot um i actually try to like hide a lot of who i am um in public just because i don't like being hit on when i go to the grocery store like i sense, don't yeah. like being followed like oh, i I live in the city currently, um, mm -hmm. and my hair salon is, like, within walking distance from my apartment. Like, I was outside for 30 seconds, and I had this dude follow me into my hair salon. Oh, that's so Just weird. Just because I, I looked pretty, and he wanted to ask me a question even though he was hovering over me and like it just happens daily so i'm literally at the point where like if i go out if i if i'm just running errands or if i don't have plans i am wearing sweatpants my yeah. makeup's not done and my hair's like i i, I don't want to say like i intentionally look as ugly as possible but i definitely <laughs> don't cry because i'm yeah. just so sick of like being constantly bothered and i mean i i get it like i'm a pretty girl I don't get mad when this stuff happens to me. It's just very, it's scary, you know? Of course. Yeah, when somebody's following you, you don't know what their intent is in any way, shape, or form. And then on top of that, what I've always found weird is like, like to to a certain extent, being a human being is naturally sexualized because we're sexual beings, right? But the second you make that somebody else's problem is when it gets weird. When you're following somebody into a hair salon because you find them attractive, it's like, well, no, you can just find them attractive, acknowledge that in your head, and then move on, right? Or if you do want to ask somebody right. out, yeah, if you do want to ask somebody out, you can maybe try to go up to them, but if they're not trying to talk to you or if they're going in somewhere, you don't follow them in or try to force them to talk to you, you know? Honestly, like, it's my favorite thing, though, when, like, people do, like, flirt with me in public and they're nice about it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, I'm just not at a point where I'm, like, really looking for that. I'm very busy with work, and I actually just bought a house. So I'm, like, nice. But if you're, like, nice to me and you see me in public <laughs> and you're like, hey, like, can I have your number? I think you're really pretty. I will be nice to you back. Like, yeah, I, I can will, tell. Yeah, I can tell. I'll you're a very nice person. <laughs> yeah, like, if you're cool, I'll be cool, too. But if you're creepy, I'm just going to, like, ignore you. <laughs> yeah, no, of um, course. But going back to, like, what you said when, like, being a sex worker. Because I guess mm -hmm. all those times, like, they don't really know I'm a sex worker. I'm just, like, True. a pretty girl to them. And mm -hmm. chances are, if they knew I was a sex worker, they'd probably, like, call me disgusting or something. Because that's just the type of people that <laughs> yeah. they are. Yeah. Um, but I was actually 
at a local club, um, not a strip club, like a, you know, party club. Okay. Um, and <laughs> there was this like model slash photographer roll call and they were hosting this event where it was like anyone from the area, any models or any photographers come and like collaborate and intermingle and like, do you know what I mean? Like photographers yeah, yeah, take pictures and models mm-hmm. work with photographers. So I went. Yeah, networking party. Was, yeah, I was free mm-hmm. that night. And um, so I'm just sitting there like having a drink and um, this photographer I was talking to, he was like, all right, like, do you want to start shooting? And I was like, yeah, like, let's go for it. I bought, bought a bunch of crazy outfits and I do modeling within my city a lot. Like I do a lot of modeling and I do more explicit modeling. Like I'll do bikini, lingerie, like tiny dresses type stuff, but mm-hmm. it's very normal. Like the stuff I wear is very normal for this whole city's modeling, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So I change, and <laughs> I was wearing something scandalous. It was like a fishnet dress, and I had pasties on and like a thong. Okay, okay, killing it. But <laughs> you know, yeah, I was looking cute. Like Hell I was yeah. modeling. Like I'm not gonna wear like a normal outfit to get my pictures taken. No, in. Of course, I'm going yeah. To wear an, an outfit to model in. Yeah, and you're an adult um, film. At, I mean, at your, your porn star to a certain extent. Yeah. Right? You make only so exactly. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I'm a fucking adult. Like I wasn't Absolutely. nude. Like. So anyways, I'm getting my photos taken and I'm like modeling and I'm working it. And then the hostess of this club I was at calls my photographer over and then he comes up to me and he was like, hey, you're going to have to change. And I'm like, okay, that sucks. But like, whatever. Mm. And it's just, it was just a whole attitude about it. Anyways, I'm in the bathroom and I'm changing. I'm like, well, shit. What am I going to wear? I don't have anything mm. better than this. Like, yeah. this is my wardrobe. Like, I'm a sex worker. I'm I'm a sex worker. Like, this yeah. is what I wear. Yeah, <laughs> so I put on my most covering outfit, which was black leather booty shorts and a black crop top. And I'm like, okay. all right, this is just going to have to do this. Is It covers the most. It's mm-hmm. still shorts and a crop top even if my ass is out (laughs) so i'm like in the mirror and i'm like working up the courage to like go back out there because it was embarrassing i could have as much confidence as i want but getting told to change and i was like the only model too yeah like i was totally just thrown out in like a wolf den it felt like yeah so i'm sitting there like working the courage up and this bottle girl walks into the bathroom we're the only two people in the bathroom and she starts laughing and i thought she was gonna like laugh with me like oh my god i have those same shorts but no, she laughs at me, takes a paper towel, continues to laugh, looks at me, and then walks out. What? And I'm just like, did this bitch just laugh what? at me? That is was, fucking crazy. I got so pissed. I got so pissed. I changed and I left the club. And I was like, I'm never yeah. going here again. They will never get my business again. I actually called the manager the next day and I was like, I don't want to be a Karen or anything, but I'm a professional model. This event was for models. It was totally unacceptable that I was told I had to change. And your workers' behaviors was completely unacceptable. Like, yeah. At the, yeah, at the end of the day, they should know, if you're being invited, they should know what type of modeling you do, first of all. And then, therefore, it should, would be up to them to then either explain the wardrobe setting and what is and is not allowed. Um, not having you change when you come there. That's ridiculous. And then on top of that, the fact that they, she, the person didn't even come to you. You said they called up your photographer who then came to tell you. That's Didn't like, you talk to me? Yeah, exactly. That's so much disrespect. Like, come to me directly directly there's no reason for that and then that is a whole other i don't know what type of audacity you have to have to just walk it and start la- like how are you not embarrassing yourself at that point like I, that's crazy so good on you for leaving that's fucked up yeah definitely <laughs> do not work was, with them it again it was such a crazy experience and i like i was i'm gonna be honest i did cry yeah, thanks. But, that's normal. That's, you know what I mean? <laughs> Natural. I would cry, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, it's it's just the clubs in my area. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like they tend to hire very snobby people. Um, <laughs> I don't want to, like, talk crap or anything, but mm. it's just very upsetting because, like, they just don't like me. They don't <laughs> like me. I go out. I try to socialize with people and they mm. just talk down on me. They look down on me and it's like, they really only care just about clout. 
Yeah, no, most yeah. of the time that does seem to be what it is. Like, I remember I was on, there was this really, like, n- like s- kind of small website called uh, VidMe. It was, like, this YouTube kind of knockoff. And essentially, like, I got kind of, like, I was a, a larger creator on that platform. And I remember just having, like, you know, a, a few thousand followers on that platform people would come to me and kind of like treat me in a certain way and i was like no i know you're talking to me just because you want clout you want something from me or in the other way it's like i know you're talking to me because either like in this way because you're either like jealous or maybe you like are upset about something there's like all sorts of weird things that happen when you're a creator who is moderately successful interacting with like other people that want to create or you know are in that space etc so it's it's and especially in like larger cities where a lot of the people trend younger you know what i mean like there's tends to be this weird high school dynamic where people just want to have be better than other people and it's just high school so that's bad. a great way to describe it <laughs> yeah it's just like you're a grown adult like why do you care about that and coming from someone that has the followers that has the money that has everything i could ever need it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter like yeah. the only thing that really matters in life is just being happy when surrounding yourself with people that you care about like of course money and followers on instagram it's not going to get you where you really want no to be. of course and it's like followers on instagram is like totally the only reason that that's good is because it can get you some some money and then money is only good insofar as like you don't have to stress about food and shit like that you know otherwise like you get to a point where it's like this is excess for no reason um and so like i, I totally feel you there and it's very i'm glad to hear that you have a, a pretty healthy mindset it sounds like on that regard like you don't i i have talked to a couple people that it seems like their main goal is money and things like that and just acquiring more and more and and it's always sad to see because i know that those people are going to one tire themselves out and two by the end of it they're gonna look back and be like wow i could have done all these different things but i was so obsessed with of making that number on that screen go as high as possible you know and so it, I'm, I'm again glad to hear that you have a, a positive mindset there um it can be and, very toxic. Mm-hmm. just like you're like you said looking and just wanting that number on the screen to grow up to go up like mm-hmm. it can be very very toxic and really bad for your mental health yeah and people can really get like uh, obsessive over like and i remember i i like i i got every time that like i'll get like a a little bit of a video going up and some comments coming in things like that i can find myself like going into the app more refreshing more and it's like hold on wait need a step away i don't want to get obsessed with this etc because also i think that it does taint the content as well to a certain extent when you're more focused on that number growing it can push you away from making the things that you enjoy and want to make and then that makes the quality of the content go down in general typically so yeah no that that is that is definitely uh, an interesting point there and then so um let's see with tiktok um i've a lot of porn stars and only fans creators and etc um usually tend to have issues with tiktok so have you had accounts banned have you had run-ins with tiktok so how many accounts have you had banned <laughs> you a number like i genuinely mm-hmm. can i'm assuming it's in probably around 50 Oof, yep that's about right <laughs> 60 i'd say i have seven phones okay <laughs> because of tiktok that's like, I so want crazy seven phones. i think it's ridiculous like my purse is like 20 pounds i swear that's it's, crazy yes but like tiktok is very difficult and it's constantly changing and like once you think you have it figured out it like totally just does a 180 and you're like well shit never mind like grew all that that i just figured out um <laughs> i've had a bunch of accounts deleted I've had very low following accounts deleted. I've had very high following accounts deleted. I've had accounts with no videos doing well deleted. And I've had accounts with all my videos doing well deleted. Like, it Mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. And um, (laughs) so sometimes they give you the option to appeal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you get the chance to appeal. And I just come up with, like, the craziest lies but it works sometimes (laughs) like for a while i was doing the sob story of like oh i'm a single mother i have three children and i need to (laughs) feed all of them blah 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 blah. so that worked okay like fifth account Uh. and then i started using like oh like 
I'm a recent, recently a widow, and my husband died, and the only videos of us are on that account, and I need them <laughs> back, and I didn't save them, and that's one that one's been working lately. Oh, uh, okay, okay, that's smart as hell. I had never thought about trying something like that. It's just, it's just crazy things, or like recently, and this has been very common in like the sex worker community, is like captioning videos with like hashtag fake body. And, I like, have I'm seen that. Mm -hmm, yep. Because they'll constantly take your videos down for like. It's, what's it called? It's like um, something minor, like endangerment of a. Minor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't remember it's exactly. Really I've had yeah, I've had stuff taken down for that when I was like, I'm a guy fully clothed, and I was like, what the hell is this? Is this? Um. So yeah, no, it it is ridiculous, especially considering that a lot of TikToks, uh, you know, atmosphere is made up of people that uh, there is a subsection of where kids are prominent right i would say that that is usually like um the the addison ray charlie d'amelio side of tiktok right the more mainstream side those is usually where the kids go then we have the more like lgbtq side and kind of like the only thing the 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 accountants side you know what i'm saying so um it, it we have all these different sides but it seems like a large portion of the atmosphere is made up of people that ingest OnlyFans content and OnlyFans creators and a lot of the views that are churning are from that type of content and so it's so strange to me that TikTok has not figured something out to either differentiate that by putting it to where you can make your content like 18 plus etc or like me even like if you do like a like YouTube has YouTube kids for example having some sort of thing where people that are much younger can go over here to watch instead of TikTok it, it's strange to me that they don't do that and especially because I've talked to several people and they all have the same story that you do. They have 50, 60 accounts banned. They have to have several phones. It's, it's the most insane thing ever. And especially because it is a great advertising platform if it if it allow you to use it for the most part. Um, so um, that is genius though. I had never thought about that. So thank you for that tip in case I ever do need to uh, appeal again. That'll be great. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I think that for the, oops, you hit the my mic there a little bit. Um, I think for the most part, um, there was, we're, we're coming up on an hour here, so I don't want to take too much more of your time. But um, I think for the most part, I got a good a good amount of what I wanted uh, to hear from you uh, uh, covered um I thank you uh, for going uh, over a lot of that stuff there I think a lot of it was really interesting and will be really useful for like maybe people that are entering into the OnlyFans business or uh, you know on the TikTok side of things um, one thing I do like to ask people is there something that you would say to people that are getting into the OnlyFans business either specifically for women men everybody what would you say I feel like I want to say just be sure. Um, I know it seems very glor like glamorous and crazy, and I know like I put on the perception on social media that I have a very like you know glamorous lifestyle and it's very easy, but that's just not the case. Um, I have to work a lot, mm -hmm. like a lot of work. I work overtime for myself, and it's not as easy as it seems and that's not even like regarding like the mental health aspect of it it can be very hard on your mental health um and there's just a lot of factors so yes the money can be you know very bright and blingy and stuff but mm -hmm. it's also like it's not promised the money isn't promised you know Absolutely. there's a whole bunch of only fans accounts and not all of them do well but yours does have the chance of doing well mm-hmm I don't know just be sure about it like it's it's a big deal it's a big sure. deal and i'm not gonna say it's not and i'm not gonna say it's easy because it's not <laughs> yeah no yeah yes you need to be sure i think that is all very very good information you do need to be sure that this is something that you can both do and handle mentally because also you got to know that if it is successful People are going to know about it. People are going to maybe see you and come up to you. It, you know, they're uh, you're going to have, sadly, because of the fucked up world we live in, you're going to have people treat you differently from time to time if they do know that you're a sex worker. There's a lot of things you do have to keep in mind. But if you are somebody who's confident in yourself, you're like free in that sense and, and you know that this is something that you'd be cool with, definitely it might be some for you. And and to your point, absolutely, it's not easy. Like, especially because there are so many people doing it now, you do have to have some way to stand out, like by either hitting a niche or getting lucky on like TikTok now and like getting really good 
good views there um you know uh or just kind of like standing out quality wise like having better cameras mics etc oh i will wait. say if mm -hmm. you're gonna do it make a tiktok i say that to everybody and like <laughs> No one listens to me. If you're gonna start an OnlyFans, <laughs> make like five TikTok accounts and just start mm -hmm. posting on it. Like, mm -hmm. there's traps, everything, and you're gonna your chances of succeeding are gonna be a lot better if you do that. That is exactly what Mrs. Robinson said. <laughs> she said the exact same thing. Make a TikTok. So uh, that is also great advice. So Lavinia, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out of your day to join me here for this interview. You are a lovely person to speak to. So thank you so much. And I hope that people out there get a little bit of something from this about who you are. Maybe if they're going to start an OnlyFans, a little bit of uh, advice there. Um, and in the future, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can maybe have another interview, get a little deeper into some other topics and whatnot. Um, but outside of that, the, the one thing uh, is if there's anything else you'd like to say, I'd like to, uh, to give you a second to go ahead and do that, even though you kind of mentioned that about TikTok. If there's just anything you want to shout out or anything like that, you can do so. The only other thing, you don't have to, but if also if you could say thank you for listening to Smoking Sessions, then that would be uh, that would be perfect. Go for it. Anything else to say? Um, this has been a great interview. Thank you um, for being very patient with me. I'm sorry <laughs> like I ignored you on Twitter for a while. I'm really bad with messages. You're all good. Um, <laughs> but this is awesome. I mean, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Smoking Session and listening to what we have to say. Hell yeah. All right. We'll see you all in the next one, everybody.